five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, MC Retro Gamer here. Today's video is going to be uh, uh, Michael Jackson versus Prince. Now here's the video we're going to be watching today, and here we go. Music in the 80s without bringing up both Michael Jackson and Prince. In terms of pop, the two practically define the era and irrevocably alter the course of modern music. But with such dominant forces comes a bit of friction. There was definitely a bit of a there can only be one dynamic between the two. The two icons paralleled each other throughout their respective careers. Prince debuted with For You in 1978. Jackson debuted as a solo act the following year with Off the Wall. Prince released 1999, in which Jackson countered with Thriller, therefore provoking Purple Rain and so on and so on. This back and forth, however, was not limited to the charts. As you will soon find out, it got petty and at one point downright deadly. Here's the full details on Michael Jackson and Prince's legendary rivalry. In most articles comparing the artists, they were depicted as polar opposites. Jackson was the innocent man-child to Prince's rebel. Jackson was the mainstream commercial. Now, well, what I was going to say is, Jackson only cares about love. Prince only cares about sexual activity. Me as a kid, Jackson was my favorite. Prince, uh, not so much. I'll explain why when we go to this next part. Commercial juggernaut, while Prince was the alternative avant-garde challenger. Jackson was magic and wonder. Prince was sex and transgression. See? As the New York Times else. noted in 1984, if Mr. Jackson's message is, all you need is love, Prince's amounts to, all you need is sex. But for two artists who are so individual and iconic irrespective of each other, it is uncanny how much the two artists had in common. Both were born the same year, just months apart. Both artists this came... picture right here. This is Jackson before all the acne came out. Prince had a bigger hair afro, this big, and it was like, well, I'm going to explain this real quick. Michael, on one hand, when he did the uh, Thriller album, he did the Pepsi commercial with his brothers, and if you guys have not ever seen that the uh, Pepsi uh, commercial back in, I think it was 80, 80 something, um, Backstage, he was on stage doing a uh, commercial with the Jackson 5. And uh, when he started doing this dance uh, little spin, he sparks started flying into his hair. And he started dropping down and started screaming, My, my, my hair, hey, my hair, how my hair. And that's just how it was like. All right, best of the video. Came out of tough Midwest cities with strict disciplinarians as fathers. Both believed in musical fusion and surrounded themselves with racially diverse collaborators. Both played liberally with notions of race, gender, and sexuality, idolizing the likes of Sly Stone, Stevie Wonder, and James Brown. It is fitting then that their first known interaction was during a James Brown New Year's Eve concert in 1983. At this time, Jackson's career was shattering records and had reached groundbreaking new heights after the release of Thriller. While Prince's breakthrough album 1999 was receiving widespread acclaim from critics, and the two were often compared and pitted against each other in the press, Michael Jackson was invited on stage where he sang and dazzled the audience with his dance moves. After Jackson's crowd-thrilling performance, he then leaned into Brown's ear and dared him to invite Prince up to try follow-up. Prince accepted the chance to impress his idol, but was not ready to perform at his best. He came on stage, attempted to play a malfunctioning guitar, and then was going to swing over the crowd on a lamppost. But he didn't realize it was only a prop, and the lamppost with Prince on it crashed into the crowd. MJ mocked him tirelessly, and according to Quincy Jones after the show, Prince was so devastated that he got humiliated in front of James Brown that he tried to run over Michael backstage. 
To add insult to injury, mere months later, Prince and Jackson competed for the same accolades at the Grammys, where Prince left empty-handed and sat back to watch Jackson collect a record haul of eight Grammys. Stoking his desire to reach equal heights, to be similarly recognized for his work. Later that year, Jackson observed the musical and cinematic phenomenon of Purple Rain, which quickly became Prince's most critically and commercially successful release spending 24 consecutive weeks atop the Billboard music charts. In 1985, Prince's Purple Rain beats Michael Jackson's Thriller at the American Music Awards for favorite pop rock album. Later that night, a horde of A-list musicians recorded the famous We Are The World charity single, which Jackson oversaw with Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones. Everybody was there except Prince. They tried to, they tried to get him to say... Try to get him to do it. Didn't get to happen. Lana Ritchie was there. I think Weird Al has something to do with that. I don't know. Prince and Jackson are supposed to have a verse that they sing to each other. The two had met for lunch as organized by Jones. But Prince is a no-show. Later that night, Prince is spotted at a Hollywood club against his manager's advisement. In the book Let's Go Crazy, Prince and the Making of Purple Rain, the singer's backing guitarist, Wendy Malvoin, says, I wasn't allowed to say the real reason, because he thinks he's a badass and he wanted to look cool, and he felt like the song for We Are The World was horrible. The following year, Quincy Jones attempted to get the two stars to make amends through a musical collaboration. Jackson had written a song named Bad, and the producer sees it as a potential duet with Prince. What an epic showdown that would have been. Picture it now. The vocals, the instrumentality, the faux masculinity from knife fight dance choreography. Prince was supposedly on board until realizing it would require him to sing the lyric, Your Butt Is Mine, to Jackson. Don't worry, this record will be a big hit even if I'm not on it, Prince said at the time. It is later revealed that Prince gifted him with a box of voodoo artifacts, and Jackson was convinced that Prince was trying to cast a spell on him. Jackson allegedly stated around this time that he doesn't like to be compared to Prince, calling him rude and nasty. It's not fair he feels like I'm his opponent. I hope he changes because, boy, he's going to get hurt. He's the type that might commit suicide or something. Okay, that right there explains that Prince tried to hurt Michael or something, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about this next part. As their 80s glory faded and the 90s rolled on, both artists dealt with the aftermath of multiple personal blows. Jackson's child molestation accusations and Prince's heated dispute with his record label. There were multiple times when Jackson reached out to Prince about a potential collaboration. I think it would be just great, Jackson reportedly told Prince over the phone, although a joint effort never materialized. In late 2006, Will I Am arranges for Jackson to attend a show during Prince's Las Vegas residency. Prince knows where Jackson will be seated, and in a strangely sexually charged moment of dominance akin to that found in nature, Prince emerged into the crowd, swung his hips, and slapped the bass hard in Michael's face. This was something that probably could have been written off as showmanship if it weren't for the fact it was so damn deliberate and so damn public as though it was some kind of payback for the humiliation he was subjected to in front of his idol James Brown 20-some years before. MJ was quite upset by the gesture according to Will I Am, and is quoted to have said the following over breakfast the next day. Why do you think Prince was playing bass in my face? Prince has always been a meanie. He's just a big meanie. He's always been not nice to me. The following year, Jackson was already willing to forgive Prince with an invitation to join him on a planned comeback tour, in which Prince was quick to turn down. Michael seemed pretty disappointed about it, a source reported. Although after Jackson's death in 2009, Prince seemed to have gained a new perspective on his torturous relationship with Jackson. As reflected in a 2010 Ebony interview, Prince spoke about how he and Jackson discussed the difficulties of balancing religion and fame and that he wishes he'd spoken to Jackson about the struggles before he died. When astronomical talents such as Michael Jackson and Prince exist in the same time and space, it's easy for comparisons to be drawn. Both parties work tirelessly to strike out as individuals, only to be lumped into a single existence by others without a second thought. And on their end, it's even easier to feel frustrated with sad comparisons. 
As part of their legacy, the only hope is that both artists are recognized for their individual talents and impact they both made on the world and its music. That's the end of that, guys. At the end, my results are... Which one do I like more? Alright, I'm gonna tell you. Michael Jackson is my favorite. I would never let him... Let anyone tell me wrong. He's always been... A f I've always been a fan of him. Prince, on the other hand... He's got the music. He's not much of a thing to think about. Sorry. It's all you Prince fans out there. I'm sorry. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. More videos are coming your way. MC Retro Gamer out.